Lesson 18, an introduction to composition. Composition is one of the key elements to every good photograph. It's all about what you include and what you exclude from your frame. It's also about how you arrange things within your frame. A well-composed photo will guide the viewer's eye through the composition the way the photographer intended. A poorly composed photo will make even the most interesting subjects appear dull. Every time I compose a photo I'm looking to arrange everything within my frame in a pleasing manner. Out of all of the different composition rules there's one that really stands out and that I teach about the most and this is to fill your frame. Make sure that whatever is in your frame is relevant to the photo that you're taking. Filling your frame only with what's relevant is the first step towards good composition. When you only include elements in your frame that fit the intention that you have for the story you're telling with the image, your picture will be much stronger. When you can eliminate all distracting elements, your image will be much more interesting to look at. For me, filling the frame is the most important role of composition more so than any of the other rules like the rule of third or using diagonals or leading lines. These other rules are important and they're good to use because they're tried and true when you use them along with filling your frame. One common mistake that new photographers make is that they concentrate only on their subject they're not seeing whatever else is in their frame. You must learn to look at the whole frame so looking around the edges of your frame you'll start to see things that could be distracting or that are not relevant to the picture that you want to make. And when you do see things in your frame that you don't really want to include in your composition, you've got some choices to make about how to hide them, how to recompose, or what you can do to make a more interesting picture that only includes what's relevant when you fill the frame. Your point of view, where you stand or sit or lie down to take your photos, will certainly affect what you see in your composition. And if you photograph your subject with a wide angle lens or a medium one or a telephoto lens, this is also going to have a great effect on what's recorded in the frame, what's in your composition. How you position your main subject in the frame in relation to the other elements you're photographing also has a great influence on how your composition will look. One reason I prefer to look through my camera's viewfinder is that it cuts out all distractions and I'm only looking at what's going to be in my frame. I keep my other eye closed and this way I can really concentrate on filling my frame. If you're using your live view or using your phone to take photos, you're more open to seeing distractions around you and not necessarily concentrating so much on exactly what you're taking a photo of. I think of composition and photography in some ways as being similar to grammar is and language. There are rules to follow, the rules are important, but if you read some of the most creative writing, their grammar tends to go in different kind of directions and not always stick to the rules, which can produce some of the most interesting writing. It can also produce some of the most interesting photographs when you don't necessarily follow the rules. I love to encourage people to learn the rules. A lot of photographers will then encourage you to learn to break the rules. What I prefer is that you learn the rules so well that you can use them intuitively, that you can apply filling your frame, the rule of thirds, the rule of diagonals or whatever rule that you want to use, it'll happen intuitively. You won't actually necessarily be thinking about it consciously all the time. This takes practice and it takes time, but you've got to make a start to be able to make it happen. And making a start by learning to fill your frame is going to give you the best compositional foundation. Lesson 18, practical exercise and introduction to composition. In this exercise, you'll learn more about what to include and what to exclude as you're composing your photos. Choose a single subject and photograph it from different angles, some from high up, some from lower down, some with a wide lens, some closer up. Don't stand for all of these photos. Squat down or lie down or get up on a chair or a ladder if you can do that safely and confidently. Photograph your subject from as many different angles as you can think of. 
And as you're moving about and as you're changing your focal length from wide to closer up, pay attention to how much of the background you're seeing and what's in the background behind your subject. Think about if there's distractions in your frame too, if there's things in your composition that you don't want to see, what can you do? Sometimes even moving just a little bit left or right or up and down, you can eliminate these distractions. I'm photographing the bamboo and looking up towards the sun here, and depending on how I position myself, I can see the sun in my frame, or I can hide it behind one of the stems of bamboo. And even varying this a little bit can change the composition, especially the effect of the bright sunshine and what it's having on my finished photo. Change your focal length too. Don't always use your widest or a medium lens. Sometimes use a telephoto, zoom right into your subject. As you're doing this, look at what's happening to the background. How much of your background can you see when you zoom to the widest angle and when you zoom to the closest angle? Try taking a photo with the widest angle zoom and take a note of how much you can see and then back away from your subject and zoom in so that you get the same amount of your subject in the frame and see how this changes the composition. Each time you move and set up a new composition, look carefully at the edges of your frame. What can you see there? Is everything in your frame relevant to your photo? Look at what happens when you move around a little bit. Try to find the best angle. I'm photographing some of these bamboo leaves here with the backlighting on them and I'm trying to get a nice dark background but there's other pieces of plant, other pieces of bamboo and other plants in the frame that are catching the sun so I've got to be really careful to try and eliminate these. I'm also having to stretch up a bit higher to avoid getting any of the sky in the top of my frame. And I'll crouch down a little bit and see what I can do to get the bamboo just with the sky behind it. And I'm changing my exposure dramatically as well to expose for the sky. That looks pretty good to me. Typically when I find an interesting subject to photograph, I'll photograph it from different angles. I'll use horizontal, I'll use vertical. Sometimes I'll try different lenses, different focal lengths, but I'm always looking to try and make the most interesting photo of it. This will not often be the first angle that I view my subject from. I find as I move around and view a subject from different angles, I'm gonna make a much more interesting composition of it. Key points from this lesson are, Fill the frame is the most important composition rule. Look at everything in your frame, not only your main subject. Move around and view your subject from different angles. Practice this to improve your photography. Each time you find a subject to photograph, look at what else is in your frame. Try to only include elements that support your main subject. 